Kenya, my motherland. In this country, there was born a power woman and a powerhouse. My name is Miss Mweni, and this is my YouTube channel. Welcome. I'm a former radio presenter at Hero Radio 99.0 FM. I worked there, had my personal experience for four, five years. Under the tutelage of my former boss, uh, Mr. Sam, I really respect him because he picked me up when, he, when I, I didn't believe in myself at that time. He picked me up, he encouraged me, and um, I found a lot of pleasure in working with him. Me being on radio, it mentored me, it sharpened me to be the Miss Moini that I am. And something very interesting, I forgot, when I went into radio, I googled and I noticed I'm a beautiful black woman. Eh? And you know everyone right now, sorry to say for ladies who are lighter, I have now offense for you, but I feel like most of the ladies who are lighter kind of, they're so pretty. And, and they're those who influence the black skin woman like me to go into bleaching and all that. But for me, I used to call myself Miss Mweni the Beauty. Then the self-esteem I had in myself. That was my name, by the way. If you'll come to Nakuru and ask for Miss Mweni the Beauty, they'll tell you, hey, we know that she lay. And, she, and she's good at what she does. And there are those who would hate. They'll say, Wila Najitanga the Beauty, and I see beauty. You know, too, what to But you see, that did not stop me from finding myself, from pushing, from getting to understand who I am and what I want to achieve in this life. If I tell you what my first uh, salary job was, you'd be so shocked. Because I was an intern. I was only getting like 10 Gs. <laughs> 10 Gs. 10 Gs, by the way. And that is what was helping me survive like, and do everything. So what I did was, through that 10 k, I I used to find other things to do eh, to at least become the person that I have become today. I, I did not look at this offer and think at a, it would not work. Because this, this internship that I did gave me an opportunity. This job that I did for three months, four months, gave me an opportunity to meet, to network, to meet with people of different calibers. And it also introduced me to my former governor, whereby now we created a, a good relationship of working together. So I would plan youth concerts, I would plan events for the youth. This is to tell someone who is out there and they're feeling like this opportunity of an intern. Nipesa kidogo sana, it cannot take you somewhere. Look at the at the at the positivity of that internship look at the at the at the benefits of that job who does it connect you to during my internship i used to go and work as an intern in the radio station every night after 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 a couple of hours so i'll just go there and and queue in and i, I remember i used to have a uh a co-host called sam so we would share our stories we would blend and my boss, my immediate boss just liked me and he was like, yeah, I like this energy. This is good energy and you can do it. But I had not, yes, I had done journalism and mass communication before and I had ventured into broadcasting, but I had never thought even a day that I would be a radio presenter as quick as that. Apparently, as we continued, I continued motivating myself and I landed myself the morning show whereby I hosted it for quite a couple of time. And... Um, when I was just doing this, I realized that I had a passion in uh, events. Uh, so how the events issue came up is um, I, I, I realized the money I was getting on my, uh, on my, my salary was a little bit uh, not sorting out my problems. <laughs> and this was in Nakuru County. So I, I decided, I, let me find a side hustle. So what I used to do, by the way, this is very interesting, I would go. A, a coordinate um, like Club 64. I used to go to 64 lunch and a restaurant where by now I'll do, I'll host my parties and just coordinate with the people. So I had gigs that were planned for WCW. And in the, in the, in the process, I met somebody called Mr. Mburu and um, Mr. Alan, and they really supported me 100%. So I started a theme of hosting concerts. So I'll bring in different artists. That's how I met Jalango. And, and he was a very big inspiration to me. 
and we really had a good chat. That's why I also met Piera McKenna and a couple of artists that have given work here and there. This journey wasn't really, really that interesting because it comes, guys are so judgmental. Uh, you're here hosting a party in a club. So guys are like, Ay, how, how can she be hosting a party in a club and she's here uh, working uh, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m.? Because, you know, uh, media and entertainment both relate. So there are those who will judge you. They'll think you're a party hopper. There are those who will judge you. They'll think that uh, uh, she's, oh, she's taking up the spaces. But to me, that was what I liked and that is what I enjoyed doing. It was not easy mafungiwa nyumba. As much as we were working on you working on radio. Uh, the days I, I I wouldn't say I went hungry because I'll be lying, but the days you'd want to have something that you want but you cannot afford to have it. And then at that time there was a lot of pressure, left, right and centre. You know, people have different different uh, stories. Eh? And being a firstborn you're very responsible, like you have to take care of your siblings who are following you and, and, and you have to lead them and show them a very good example because there's no, there's no way you're going to fail. So to them they see you as an icon, so you have, you have to keep supporting them and doing the right thing every now and then. My first gig I tried putting up on my own, it was called the Peace Concerts in Nakuru County in 2017. Can I tell you something? Someone ran away with my idea, went and tried making, the, making it work, but it never, never worked the way mine would have worked. So in the middle of hosting my gig, my gig failed because I did not have the money to pay the stage and sound and tents and everything. So it was really, 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 really bad. So music was switched off on stage when I was planning to host this gig. And imagine you have people who've come for this concert and music is switched off. Yani? To me, it was very heartbreaking. You have vendors who have gotten the spaces. As an events planner, I know what events planner got through. It was really, really a bad place, and I really wanted to make this thing work. And, and for the sake of the youths and, uh, and, 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 and peace and all that. So that night, I was really heartbroken. I was really, really, really heartbroken. I went through a bad time. But later on, God connected me to my divine helper. And my divine helper, helped me. He picked up my hands and that was a breakthrough that I got from that. He picked me up and he walked this journey with me. And now I'm a CEO to an events company. I have tents, I have stage, I have, I have everything. So I didn't look at that moment or at that time as a... As, yes, I was broken because I really wanted it to work, but it didn't work. But now here I am, I am able to hire my tent, I'm able to hire my stage, I am able to make things work, I'm able to pay artists well, and, and I thank God for that. So in 2017, I met the president in one of the, so this is the I'm telling my boss, I have to go say hi to the president. Let's go. My boss was my very good friend. So we took a ride together all the way. And then there was this event that was happening. So in the midst of the event that we that was happening, we just went to cover because I had my media pass. So to cover to now, I say media, wa the protocol team. And I know everyone who is in media will know how protocol works. But you know, at that time I was not, I didn't, I was not doing any camera work. So I was just told to, but I was very aggressive. One thing about me is I'm very aggressive. I go for what I want and I know what I want and I always get it. In the lineup, His Excellency had a chance to pass by where I was. And immediately I just shouted, how are you, Mr. President? You know, because I was so happy and that is what I wanted to achieve like the whole day. And that's what I told my, 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 my boss, I'm going to meet the president. I didn't have like an, a formal appointment, appointment, but I knew because I have an appointment with the most high God, he can never disappoint me. So I, I went and he said hello. He was there with his deputy, with the deputy president and a team of people. And I said hello. And do you know what he said? He laughed back at me and, and I told him, Mr. President, eh, you're doing a good job. And that was that's, that's the time that we were campaigning. <laughs> and 
and you can be courageous wahi <laughs> that was very interesting so nika akatusalimia na akaenda i got my job i i moved to nairobi I, it was in between a rock and um because I, I was thinking now i've never been in nairobi i don't know how nairobi looks like i i i don't like nairobi you know that's what i used to say but i was like i would adjust from nakuru to nairobi i would adjust it was a it was kind of confusion but let me tell you something change is as good as rest once you allow yourself to be in that space in that position everything just flows because now imagine you're leaving your friends those that you thought were your life you're leaving even your spouses i know you're moving things are just changing here and there so i came to nairobi and uh, i started my life um, though i was dating though that is kind of um, personal though yeah i was dating and currently i'm very single and i thank god for that opportunity so i i i i found myself in nairobi i i got pregnant and uh, so i was here expecting my bundle of joy yeah just like any other normal human being and any other other person me and my spouse who expecting our baby but apparently on the july 7th uh a death decided to rob us of our joy and the reason why i thought i should share this is because there are people out here who are going through through so much and they're having a hard time and they have nobody to share with they have nobody to speak out to so miss money tv is here to share with you to take you to cry with you to to hug you to wipe away those tears so i, I remember when i lost my baby it wasn't that easy i went into a coma i was i was i was, I was thinking life has gone uh, as in I, i didn't know about it until when i was told. so when i i realized uh, later when I've, i've woken up i i asked myself honey how lucky am i as in for god to give me this opportunity to give me this chance to do this how lucky am i and what is this that i can do for the society to change the whole concept to change the whole world to change my story so i felt that there's a seed that has been bestowed in me and i'm a special person on this earth i'm a special 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 person and when i lost my baby it was a very difficult time that's the time i knew who my friends were that's the time i knew who were not my friends that's the time i knew who is real and who is not real because for me it wasn't that easy and they call us by the spade because i lost my baby i lost my relationship i at that time family for me was everything family was everything because my mom my dad my my sisters my siblings were there for me and even tomorrow if whoever i meet i think my family will always come first i will never prioritize my relationship over my family So it was really a very hard time for me. I went I sank into depression, I think, for three months until when I met my therapist. Uh I wasn't able to get out of it. I remember I would call I'll call all my friends that I felt like were my friends like let's talk. I'll call Piera and, and because she's a friend to me, she really went through this journey with me and and even during the the service of the of this of my son to just put the flowers in and pray for, because I didn't bury my son I didn't get a chance to bury my son because I didn't have that opportunity uh because my state my health state at that time was very critical really a hard time and and when I remember of that story I tears will just want to come down my cheeks but I feel like uh, I will not cry for him because I have done this I have cried with people I have cried with my friends I have cried with my with my parents I have cried with my colleagues I have cried with everyone around me and 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 today I have to be strong for him to tell this story because whatever he is is dancing with the angels and I would want to encourage a mom who's lost a child out there a mom who thought their life because I was a young mother that was my first pregnancy I didn't know what to do and I lost my baby due to negligence in the hospital so you can imagine having three scars that are caused by different parties so I it was a difficult time for me in a nutshell 
and I don't like telling that story because sometimes it brings it triggers emotions. I feel like I'm so lost. Uh, but for you, for him, I'll be so courageous to tell it without crying. Uh, it was really tough, and it's one year now down the line, and I feel like I am able, and I've been able to move on because God has given me the strength to do it. And how fast I have been able to move on is because I first believed I could do better. I first believed that healing starts with me and i want to encourage any other person who is out there and they feel like they're so lost there's nothing that they can do and they feel like um life has come to an end a mother who's lost a baby i want to encourage you that life does not stop there life continues that there is a second chapter of your life and your baby is somewhere else and very soon you'll get uh, you, you you will start a new life and, and god will bless you with more and my encouragement to people who are in relationships that don't work Please walk away. When it reaches a time like you feel like you need to walk away, please walk away. Because sometimes you may stay somewhere thinking like this is what was meant to be. And honestly, it was not meant to be. And you'll relate with it in my next chap chapter of my story whereby I have my therapist who went through this journey with me. And she was really encouraging, by the way. And she took me through this journey. And it, it reaches a point whereby you, you only need that one friend or one helper. So for me, my friend was God my family and a therapist. I love the progress Miss Moini has made and I'm here to take that space. I'm here to, to heal us all because God healed me. I feel like it's important I walked this journey with somebody else. And, and I appreciate my parents because they are, this, they, they are the strongest support system I've ever had. They are my first fans, by the way. And I know one time, one day in Chicago, when I'll be giving this speech, or in Florida, wherever, I know one time, one day, in one of the seminars when I'll be giving this speech, I'll give this iconic moments to them because they're the ones who've been there with me to push me to this level and to just show me that everything is possible. Even when you fall down at your lowest, everything is possible. Right now, I'm running as Miss Moini. I'm running with different campaigns. I have uh, the diaper campaign. It's derived from the teenage pregnancy care. And um, um, uh, it's, I'm trying to campaign for anti-teenage pregnancy. And I'm also, in a relatable kind of way, I'm also trying to relate with them by donating a diaper. It was nice sharing my story with you, my experience my life as Miss Moini. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Kindly subscribe, subscribe at Miss Moini TV. God bless you.